Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm David Percy. Up first, uh, hazardous weather graphic. There's still a coastal flood warning out for the north shore of the Seward Peninsula there. Places like Shishmaref, for example, and also along the northwest coast, uh, Kivalina, for uh, continued uh, coastal flooding. And that, wa or that uh, warning is out through noon Tuesday. Otherwise, we've got uh, continued flood watch out for the Copper River Basin, mainly the southern Copper River Basin, and also northeast Prince William Sound, Valdez, Cordova, those locations. And that's out, or that kicks into effect. The period there is late tonight through late Wednesday night. And that's for uh, additional rainfall that could result in possible flooding in those areas. And then to the north there, there's a wind advisory that continues until 6 a.m. Tuesday. For the Eastern Alaska Range, for winds through the Eastern Alaska Range passes of 30 miles an hour sustained with possible gusts of 50 miles per hour. And from there, moving on, three day outlook for Southwest Alaska, a few locations here, Tuxuk Bay. Uh, Tuesday, not too bad, some 30% uh, chance of some shower activity, but then Wednesday, the next system comes in, but moves right on through, and then back to scattered showers on Thursday. Temperatures really not varying too much, lows in the 40s, highs around 50. Kipnook, about the same pattern. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, the storm comes in, back to some scattered showers on Thursday and improving. And the same thing for Bethel, although uh, a little different there, farther inland, Tuesday, scattered showers, maybe some breaks with uh, weak ridging coming through. Then Wednesday, the front moves through, increasing wind and rain. And then Thursday, even a little bit better chance of some rainfall, but lose the wind. And again, highs right around 50, lows in the 40s for the most part. And then for the Panhandle, five-day outlook for Southeast Alaska. Today, Monday, uh, pretty nice. You know, some partly sunny sky conditions over the area once again, especially down to the south. And then rain begins to increase in the northern areas on Tuesday and Wednesday gets a little farther south, maybe down to the central coast with increasing clouds over the southern panhandle. And it looks like uh, periods of rain Thursday and Friday, especially over the northern areas. And it looks like heavy rain will return to Yakutat, uh, to, or let's see, probably tomorrow or tomorrow night with increasing clouds across the south, as I mentioned. And satellite imagery here showing uh, the band of moisture pushing uh, northward and to a certain extent to the northeast there and mainly toward the North Gulf Coast now after some uh, pretty good rains came up across South Central Alaska and then that getting kind of blocked by the Alaska Range there with lighter amounts out to the west and uh, the remnants of that big storm that went through the Bering Strait uh, Friday night or late early Saturday morning actually and then kind of stalled out there west of Point Hope, still milling around up off the western Arctic coast. And that's uh, keeping the uh, seas on the high side there. So the, again, the coastal flood warning, Shishmaref and Kivalina, uh, through noon Tuesday there. Otherwise, it continues to weaken. Wind's pretty light across that area today with uh, periods of light rain as well. And rolling this through again, you can see varying amounts of uh, clouds moving into the, especially the northern part of the southeast coast with uh, more sunshine on down to the south. Clear skies there, looks like Ketchikan right on down across the Queen Charlotte's and into uh, western Canada there. On the chart, a uh, couple of weak lows, one up over the uh, northern, or Yukon Flats area. Another one, northern Cook Inlet, about 1,004 millibars. Not much of a gradient with that, so winds are light all across the interior of Alaska. Even the Bering Sea winds are pretty good, not too strong at all. And then that uh, weakening low up off the western Arctic coast gave some light rain and showers there. And some rain uh, moved into south central Alaska, for example. Some of the heavier amounts, Sparavon, uh, three quarters of an inch, Talkeetna, King Salmon, and Valdez all had about half an inch of rain today and four-tenths of an inch fell earlier today in Anchorage, kind of tapered off this morning with a few light showers and actually some sun breaks occurring this afternoon. Otherwise, several bands of moisture dropping southward there over the Bering Sea into the 
central and eastern Aleutians, but those precipitation amounts are quite light. Tonight, rain increases on the North Gulf Coast, spreading better chances into the northern panhandle along with the clouds. And areas of rain through the eastern interior, that low continues to weaken and really doesn't move much, uh, keeping uh, periods of rain there up in the northwest. High pressure in the Bering Sea and then the next system you can see pushing eastward tomorrow brings increasing wind and rain into the Aleutians. Ridging moves inland, uh, but showers still scattered over the Yukon Delta and isolated showers, Kuskokwim Delta. Band of showers there, Togiak Bay up across the Kuskokwim Valley into the northwest interior, Koyakuk, Kobuk Valleys, dry for the north slope mostly, except over toward the eastern Arctic coast, chance of light rain and fog. Rain heavy at times, Copper River Basin into the North Gulf Coast, eastern North Gulf Coast, again Valdez eastward to Yakutat, and having a tough time making headway into the Panhandle, but something should get at least to the central coast on Wednesday afternoon, probably staying dry down to the south. And uh, pretty good rainfall, eastern North Gulf Coast and into the Copper River Basin. Wet conditions right on up into the uh, upper Tanaw Valley, 40 mile country, occasional rain, mostly cloudy skies. Scattered showers in the central interior, then the next storm begins to make landfall. Actually, the front looks like it'll make landfall along the Yukon Delta coast in the afternoon with uh, uh, gusty winds and rain ahead of that system. With, uh, that'll move right on through though, so it won't be too long, but a good westerly flow behind that with areas of fog and diminishing showers. And looking at the lows tonight in the 40s, lower 50s for the Panhandle, upper 30s Copper River, or in the uh, Kuskokwim Valley, mid 40s Copper River Basin, followed by ice tomorrow in the 50s just about everywhere, mid 60s Southern Panhandle, upper 50s to the north, and then cooler morning on Wednesday morning into the upper 30s, mid to upper 30s uh, across uh, the interior valleys, lower 40s for the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, and upper 40s to lower 50s, mild for the Panhandle. Highs lower to mid 60s, a little bit cooler with increasing clouds over the southern Panhandle, about the same in the north. Highs upper 40s to maybe mid 50s over southern Alaska. Up to the north, lows tonight in the 30s, most locations. And highs tomorrow, lower 40s, Brooks Range out to the Arctic coast, upper 40s to lower 50s in the interior, mid 40s out towards St. Lawrence Island, followed by lows, uh, upper 20s for the Brooks Range on Wednesday morning, and 30 to 35 in the Tanana Valley over toward Northway and Toke, and then the highs Wednesday afternoon. 40s uh, to near 50, Fairbanks, Fort Yukon area, otherwise everywhere else in the 40s, Brooks Range, lower 40s, upper 30s, areas of the eastern Arctic coast, and then out to the southwest, we've got uh, lows pretty uniform in the 40s for the Bering Sea, Pribilofs, Alaska Peninsula, upper 30s, St. Lawrence Island, lower 40s along the southwest coast, in toward Bristol Bay near 40, highs tomorrow, lower to mid 50s, mid to upper 40s for the Yukon Delta coast, near 50 for the Pribilofs, and upper 40s to lower 50s for the Aleutians, mid 50s out toward Shimia and Adak. Lows in the 40s, most areas, and then highs back into the 50s, although Adak pushing 60 once again, upper 40s along the southwest coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather, we've got some pretty good VFR for the North Slope and Arctic coast, and then along uh, the western and eastern southern slopes of the Brooks Range, IFR, and some IFR and marginal VFR for the west coast and the eastern Bering Sea all the way down to the central and eastern Aleutians, and marginal VFR up along the Alaska Peninsula and across Bristol Bay, up along the western Alaska Range into the uh, east central interior, and then VFR over toward the border. IFR from the Central Alaska Range there, down across the Talkeetnas, Southern Copper River Basin, Northeast Prince William Sound, all of the North Gulf, or Eastern North Gulf Coast, right down to about uh, Sitka, and on up into Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay, VFR Kodiak, and Kenai Peninsula Cook Inlet, Southern Panhandle. And the afternoon stays VFR over a good portion of the Central and Southern Southeast Coast, IFR to the north, and to the west there, to uh, about Cordova, near Prince or near uh, Valdez becoming VFR for western Prince William Sound and south central Alaska marginal VFR Copper River Basin right up to the eastern Alaska Range and looks like IFR up to about Mentasta Pass otherwise marginal VFR with some scattered areas of IFR over the western interior 
On down to a little bit bigger batch there near the Perbilovs and into Nunavak Island, staying pretty good for the North Slope and Arctic Coast, IFR over toward uh, Kaktovik, Barter Island. Next batch IFR pushing into the Western Aleutians with that next system, and that advances eastward with good westerly flow by Wednesday morning to about Atka Island and almost to St. Matthew Island. Otherwise, uh, areas of marginal VFR with areas of IFR and some scattered areas of VFR Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, South Central Alaska, Northeast Interior, and the North Slope. That's kind of shrinking away up there. And uh, southern three quarters of the Southeast Coast, VFR. North Gulf Coast still in IFR, that south to north flow pulling moisture right on up into the Alaska Range across the Copper River Basin. That starts to dissipate out a little bit, but conditions still stay on the low side there from the oh, upper Tanana Valley area down into the Copper River Basin and the North Gulf Coast Range. IFR now showing up as a front tries to drag through the southern southeast coast, so marginal VFR along the coast of Prince of Wales Island. Big area of IFR pushing eastward there over the Bering Sea toward the southwest coast. And for passes, Anatovic marginal VFR but better conditions on the north entrances of both Anatovic and Adigan for the day Tuesday. Lake Clark and Merrill marginal VFR improving to VFR uh, during the morning hours through the afternoon. Same trend for rainy, or marginal VFR early and then VFR throughout the remainder of the day. Windy showing the same trend, lower conditions early on, improving later. And Isabel looks like it'll be kind of uh, on the eastern or western edge of that moisture area, so I'll call it marginal most of the day. Mintasta IFR, especially on the south entrance. Tanita marginal VFR, but better out the west side, uh, VFR there and Portage, marginal VFR to VFR, and Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet, northern Bering Sea, and 3,000 all the way down to the Aleutians, and then uh, pretty good gradient over the western Bering and the western Aleutians, and four to 8,000 feet over the eastern interior, 10 to 12,000 feet over the Panhandle. And uh, considerable moderate chop areas of there coming up to the North Gulf Coast and starting to spill into the uh, northwest part of the Panhandle up across the Copper River Basin there, and then the next big area out to the west, but uh, a lot of warm air associated with that system, so we're looking, got to be 12,000 feet, those high freezing levels and up, and then some leftover moisture there over the northwest part of the state, uh, could bring some isolated moderate rime or mixed icing there. Jet stream, very sharp trough from the Arctic coast right on down across the, the southwest interior, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula. Bering Sea, north winds 135 knots, and to the east of that trough axis, southwest winds 105 to 140 knots, lighter over the Panhelm under the upper ridge, and at 9,000 feet, 50 knot winds coming up into the eastern north Gulf Coast, 40 knots over the northern Panhandle, strong westerlies coming into the uh, western Bering Sea, about 75 knots, not all that strong, enough for, call it a jet, and at 3,000 feet, 60 knot winds into the western Aleutians, 40 knot winds just reaching the eastern Arctic coast and 40 to 45 knot westerly zero that low off the eastern Arctic coast. So throw some isolated uh, moderate turbulence there for the eastern Arctic coast as well as the eastern North Gulf coast, more turbulence out west. It can be many miles long from one to 100 feet high traveling at 400 miles per hour. This ocean monster is known as a tsunami, and it can wreak havoc on coastal populations and landscapes. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves caused by any large and sudden disturbance of the sea surface. Tsunamis can be generated by landslides, volcanic eruptions, or even meteorite impacts in the ocean, but they are most often caused by an earthquake where there's a sudden displacement of the ocean floor. When that happens, there's a transfer of energy from the sea floor to the ocean, causing waves on the surface to radiate outward in all directions. In deep waters, these waves may not even be detectable. But when the tsunami enters shallower waters, the wave speed slows and its height increases. The water along the coast may recede noticeably. A large wall of turbulent water, called a bore, may also form. When the tsunami hits, 
It may come ashore like a fast-rising flood and strike with devastating force. The series of waves may continue for hours. The first one may not be the last or the largest. For your safety, know the potential warning signs of an incoming tsunami. A strong earthquake that causes difficulty standing. A rapid rise or fall of the water along the coast. A loud ocean roar. When you're in a coastal area, it's important to keep alert for messages from local officials, such as lifeguards, police, the U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers, and NOAA All Hazards Radio. If you find yourself in a location of a tsunami strike, here's what you need to do to stay safe. Keep calm. Walk or run to higher ground, 100 feet above sea level or one mile inland. Do not drive. Keep roads open for emergency vehicles. If you cannot move to higher ground, use the stairs to get to the third floor or higher in a sturdy building. Follow all instructions from local officials and stay out of coastal areas until authorities issue an all clear. Tsunamis can strike any coastline in the world and can affect locations thousands of miles away from where they formed. They may be uncommon, the devastation they cause makes them a deadly force in nature. For more information on tsunamis, go to the following sites. Tsunami, a killer wave, speeding across the ocean at 400 miles an hour. It smashes into land, destroying everything in its path. Tsunamis do not have a season, but they can strike any coast at any time. If one forms close to the shore, the shaking of the earth and a loud roar may warn of its approach. But when a tsunami forms across the ocean, it can take hours to reach the shore. Enough time to warn people to move to higher land. Over the past 20 years, NOAA has developed DART, a real-time monitoring system that provides data for forecasting tsunamis. The DART systems have been deployed in earthquake-prone areas throughout the ocean, including the Pacific and Indian basins. A DART system combines a surface buoy and a sensor on the ocean floor. This sensor detects changes in water pressure and seismic activity and transmits the data back to the surface. If these changes indicate a tsunami may form, the buoy signals an alert via satellite to the tsunami warning centers in Alaska and Hawaii. Back at the centers, scientists plug the data into pre-existing models. These models predict the height, the arrival time, and the coastal locations that the tsunami will hit. Watches and warnings are issued to the affected communities so preparations can begin. Today, 47 DART stations are positioned all around the world, ready to detect and warn coastal communities about the next potential tsunami. With the DART system and tsunami warning centers in place, we are now better prepared to predict a killer wave before it strikes. December 26, 2004. What began as an undersea earthquake in the Indian Ocean ended as the most deadly tsunami in recorded history, with nearly 240,000 lives lost. This was a devastating wake-up call to coastal communities and tsunami research. Prior to this event, only six of NOAA's Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunami, or DART, buoys were in place. Scientists could only predict tsunami arrival times, not flood potential. 
and there was not a global tsunami warning system. Today, 10 years later, we can tell a different story. U.S. and international coastlines are far better prepared for such a catastrophe, thanks in large part to research and technology developed at the NOAA Center for Tsunami Research at Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory. NOAA's DART array is now complete, with 39 buoys operated by the National Weather Service's National Data Buoy Center. Along with 21 international buoys, this array can measure a tsunami wave as small as one centimeter in the open ocean and provide these data in real time to forecast when a tsunami may hit the coast and how much flooding there will be. NOAA scientists and engineers are currently testing the fourth generation DART buoy that will be able to measure local tsunamis as well as distant ones. Flooding forecast models incorporate local topography and historical tsunami data in order to more accurately predict exactly how a tsunami might behave when it reaches shore. NOAA has 75 site-specific models that can provide high-resolution flooding forecasts for effective response and mitigation during a tsunami event. NOAA has gathered data from every tsunami since 2004 to improve its forecast models. Today, it operates the world's only real-time tsunami flooding forecast system using DART data to accurately compute flooding forecasts. The NOAA Tsunami Warning Centers make tsunami data available on the internet and issue advisories, watches, and warnings through the emergency alert system and via NOAA weather radios. While it is impossible to prevent a tsunami, we are now much better prepared to detect them and predict their paths and impacts so those in coastal communities can take the steps necessary to safely protect themselves. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And for the marine forecast, uh, not too bad on the south coast of the Panhandle. For Tuesday, variable winds more or less, uh, 10 knots, sea 6 feet. North coast, south winds 20 knots, seas 8 to 10 feet. 20 knot winds also in the forecast for the northern inner channels, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. Light variable winds for Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait, uh, looking at a northwest breeze at 10 knots. And for Wednesday, south coast, west winds 15 to 20 knots and west 20 for the north coast with seas up to 10 feet. South winds 20 knots, Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay and southeast 15 for Stevens Passage. Southeast winds at 10 knots for Clarence Strait. Prince William Sound, Tuesday, variable winds at 15 knots. Small craft advisories for the eastern north Gulf Coast, Middleton Island area, south winds 25 knots. Western North Gulf Coast, westerly and lighter at about 15 knots. And for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay as well as Southern Cook Inlet, northwest winds 20 knots, Northern Cook Inlet, light north wind at 10. Then on Wednesday, Northern Cook Inlet, south winds at 15 knots, Prince William Sound, north winds at 15 knots. Small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast, west southwest winds 25 to 30 knots, seas around 10 feet and a good west wind at 30 knots for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay, Southern Cook Inlet, west winds 15 knots. Kodiak Island, north to northwest winds 20 to 25 knots tomorrow, seas up to 6 feet, and west northwest at 15 for the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay looking at, nor er, at west winds at 15 knots with 4 foot seas. And for Wednesday, for Bristol Bay, small craft advisories, southwest winds 25 knots, and gale warnings for the uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula from Cape Sarachev to uh, Castle Cape. 35 knot winds out of the west, 13 foot seas, Kodiak Island small craft advisories, west southwest winds 25 to 30 knots, seas 8 to 10 feet. And for the uh, Unalaska Island, light variable winds tomorrow at 10 knots, Unimak Island, Adak and Atka, northwest at 15. Then the winds pick up uh, Amchitka Island, be increasing from the southwest to 30 knots. Gale warnings, Kiska to Shimia, south winds increasing to 40 knots, seas building to 14 feet. And for Wednesday, gale warnings for uh, everywhere except area from Kiska to Shimia, west 25, 
Southwest 40 knot winds for the eastern Aleutians, Adak and Atka, with seas running 11 to 13, 14 feet. And for the southwest coast, for Tuesday, variable winds, 10 knots. Variable winds, 10 knots for the Pribilofs, but a big increase there for St. Matthew Island, west at 30 knots, St. Lawrence Island, northwest at 15. And for the day on Wednesday, gale warnings for St. Lawrence Island, south winds, 35 knots, seas 13 feet. And small craft advisories for Norton Sound, south winds, 25 knots, south, and small craft advisories for all the other zones as well. St. Matthew Island, the southwest coast, and the Pribilofs all out of the south at 30 knots. And up along the Arctic coast, eastern Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow, a little breezy, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, 3 to 4 foot seas. Otherwise, 5 to 10 knot winds for the west side and central coast, and then 20 knot winds from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson. Cape Thompson to Wales, small craft advisories, northwest winds 25 knots, seas just under 10 feet. And for Wednesday, Southeast winds 20 knots, 25 knots from Wales to Cape uh, Thompson. And then easterlies of 15 knots for the central and western Arctic coast. And then west northwest 10 to 20 knots for the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline. And for tonight, that uh, persistent low drifts a little farther north. Chance of rain, light rain, western Arctic coast down across the western Brooks Range, no attack valley, showers into Norton Sound. And uh, coastal flood warning continues tonight for Shishmaref and Kivalina into, I believe, midday tomorrow. And rain, heavy at times, developing for the North Gulf Coast, at least pushing into southern Copper River Basin with the uh, flood watch out there through late Wednesday night. Wind advisory tonight for the Alaska Range. Eastern slopes could see gusts to 55 miles an hour. Clouds and chance of rain increases in the northern Panhandle. Next big storm pushing into the western Bering Sea uh, tomorrow but still a fair ways out, although beginning to affect the western Aleutians. And that flow of moisture with that uh, low pressure south of the Kenai Peninsula, south to north, rain heavy at times, spreading into Yakutat and into the Copper River Basin again, showers over the western interior. And chance of rain reaches at least the central coast of the Panhandle, although it will be light with uh, diminishing rain now for the north Gulf Coast, but wet over the Copper River Basin. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>